Have you ever wondered how our universe came to be? How our solar system was formed? And how the other galaxies in space got to be where they are? Well, if you think about it, many astronomers back in the 1900s could not answer these questions because they didn't understand what was beyond the cosmos. They didn't have the tools that they could use to measure and see. Fast forward to the current day and age, the James Webb Telescope has shown us more than anyone could ever imagine. From images that tell us there is more to space than there is, scientists are once again asking the question we all ask. How was the universe formed? Welcome to Tech Hook. In today's video, we're going to go on a journey through the birth of the universe. Before we embark on this journey, we're going to make four pit stops. The first is the Big Bang Explosion. The second will be the birth of our Milky Way galaxy. The third is the formation of our solar system. And then the final pit stop is life on Earth. Then there was space. Now when we talk about space, what comes to your mind? Is it just a vast, empty, and dark place? Well, space is more than that. Space may seem like it's a boundless and empty region, but it's home to so many galaxies. Another thing, it's definitely not dark, though it may appear black to you. If you want to know why it appears black, then we have created a separate video on that topic right here on this channel. But let's get back to the matter at hand. In space lies the biggest mysteries in cosmology, the study of the origins of the universe. These mysteries are about the Big Bang, the early development of the universe, as well as the acceleration of the cosmos, the dark energy that appears to be responsible for it, and other things as well. We're going to make our first pit stop right here, where we will take you to the genesis of the universe. The start of everything. The Big Bang Explosion. The majority of scientists believe that the cosmos was endless and ageless up until about the middle of the 20th century. It was Einstein's theory of relativity that led us to understand the concepts of gravity better. And Edwin Hubble, a renowned scientist, discovered that galaxies were actually moving apart from one another. Another accidental discovery of the cosmic background radiation in 1964 by scientists Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson gave us a clue to the point of origin of how the universe began. After that, improved technology like the Hubble Telescope and the James Webb Space Telescope gave us a pretty good picture of what might have caused the Big Bang explosion. This is how the universe came into being from nothing. The universe was infinitely dense and incredibly hot at the time before the Big Bang occurred. It was only after the explosion that matter was set into motion. This was also when energy, space, and time were all created. Though science could not point out the exact location and time frame, we do know that it did take place for about 10 to 43 seconds after the Big Bang explosion. This was given a term. Scientists named it the Grand Unification Epoch. However, the only mystery was that science could not determine how the universe behaved, but it was known that the weak and strong nuclear forces, as well as electromagnetic waves, were equal in force and pressure. After this majestic phenomenon, the universe started to expand, which leads us to another phase of this event. The expansion and cooling of matter. A 43-second explosion might not mean so much to you, but this was no explosion like the ones that you know about today. Even if you take a hydrogen bomb explosion, which is by far the strongest kind on Earth, it is nothing compared to the amount of heat, energy, pressure, and gravitational pull that occurred during the Big Bang. A hydrogen bomb explosion moves through the air at about 300 meters per second, while delivering heat of approximately 100 million degrees Celsius. However, if you contrast it to the Big Bang, it literally flung energy in all directions at the speed of light, which is at 300 million meters per second, which is a million times faster than the hydrogen bomb. Scientists also estimate that the temperature of the entire universe when this occurred was about 1,000 trillion degrees Celsius at just a tiny fraction of a second. 
With all that energy, it caused matter like atoms, photons, and neutrons, as well as trapped gases present at the core to be scattered at massive speeds, causing a drastic expansion. It cooled quickly because there was nothing to trap that heat. Now, if you learn more about planets, stars, or even other cosmic matter, you'll probably hear that they were all formed due to the combining of gases and atoms. But let's get back on track. Just as the universe started to expand quickly, the energy that came off from the Big Bang started to get a little diluted since there was nothing to hold back that matter and space was infinite. This caused the universe to rapidly cool. Trapped heat and gases could easily dissipate in this infinite space. Scientists are, however, still trying to figure out exactly what happened during this phase, but it is known that within a few minutes, these particles that came out of the Big Bang explosion started to stick together to form atomic nuclei. In turn, it led to the formation of gases like hydrogen and helium. So if you think of the gases that were abundantly forming at the time, their formation and combination with each other did result in something. Stars. Which leads us to our second pit stop. The birth of the galaxies in the Milky Way galaxy. So if you look at the sky at night with a telescope, you will see that there are a lot of stars that appear to be twinkling on their own. But it might be a shock to you that those stars are actually galaxies. So what exactly is a galaxy and how is our galaxy formed? Well, galaxies are nothing but a collection of stars, dust, dark matter, and cosmic matter all held together by the force of gravity. Though astronomers aren't so sure about how galaxies are formed, they certainly know for sure that the Big Bang did leave a lot of hydrogen and helium behind. Some astronomers and scientists believe that the gas and dust particles gravitated together to create individual stars and that these stars then pulled closer together into groups to form galaxies. Others think that the majority of what would become galaxies were pushed together before the stars inside the galaxies were ever created. When we talk about our galaxy at the beginning of the 20th century, many scientists believe that the Milky Way contained the whole universe. Others, such as scientist and Harvard College Observatory director Harlow Shapley, asserted that the spiral-shaped particles that were thought to be dust and gas were actually separate entities that he referred to as island universes. But it wasn't until 1924 that Edwin Hubble discovered there were seven unique pulsing stars known as Cepheid variables. He recognized they were outside the Milky Way's known range. These celestial phenomena, which were located far outside of our own galaxy, were entirely separate groups of stars, which gave the idea that there were galaxies beyond the Milky Way too. The Doppler shift of a galaxy, or in other words, the velocity of light stretched at a distance, was determined by Hubble after he had established its distance from other galaxies. He discovered that all galaxies surrounding the Milky Way are accelerating their outward motion. The galaxies are escaping more quickly the further away they are. He was able to conclude that the universe is expanding as a result, and years later they discovered that the expansion is speeding up. Galaxies can now be classified according to their shape. Some have arms that spiral outward from their central point like the Milky Way, while others have spherical ones or ones that are too stretched. Today, most of the galaxies that astronomers observe belong to the spiral category. A spiral galaxy's pinwheel form is caused by the gas and dust circling the galaxy's core at speeds of hundreds of kilometers per second. Some of them, called barred spirals, have a bar structure in the middle that was created as gas and dust were directed there. In spiral galaxies, star production is continuously fueled by dust and gas. Meanwhile, spherical or elliptical galaxies contain less dust than their spiral counterparts. Stars formed in these galaxies are often older. Astronomers believe that more than half of the galaxies in the universe are elliptical, despite the fact that they make up a smaller percentage of the visible galaxies. With galaxies comes black holes. Black holes which are located in the cores of most galaxies have the capacity to generate enormous amounts of energy, which astronomers can detect even from very long distances. Even in relatively tiny galaxies, a galaxy's core black hole can occasionally be exceptionally big or active. The black hole's jets have the ability to propel matter that is orbiting it outward. 
The most energetic objects in the universe, also known as quasars, may be found near the centers of other galaxies. And now for the third pit stop, the solar system. We live on a planet that is part of the Milky Way galaxy's outer spiral arm, our solar system. The sun, our star, and everything gravitationally connected to it, including the moons, planets like Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, and dwarf planets like Pluto, make up our solar system. The night sky contains more planets and stars outside of our own solar system. The Milky Way has hundreds of planetary systems orbiting other stars. And it's interesting to know that new planets are continually being identified. The Milky Way is only one of maybe 100 billion galaxies in the cosmos, and most of the hundreds of billions of stars in it are believed to have their own planets. While our planet may appear to be a little dot in the wide cosmos, we are not alone. It appears that there are many planets in the cosmos which are made up of a web of stars and many families of objects, some of which may have life of their own. Even then, how is our solar system formed? Our solar system was created around 4.5 billion years ago when gravity drew a cloud of gas and dust together. Although our solar system's formation cannot be directly studied, models of what could have happened millions of years ago have been developed by combining computer simulations with observations of immature star systems at a variety of wavelengths. The molecular cloud that would eventually give rise to the sun was formed by a huge collection of interstellar gas and dust that existed before the solar system. The gas congealed at low temperatures and slowly became denser. With the help of a nearby stellar explosion, or maybe on their own, the densest portions of the cloud started to collapse under the force of gravity, creating an abundance of protostars. The Birth of the Sun Let's quickly go over how our star, the Sun, was formed. Five billion years ago, a huge cloud was drifting in one of the spiral arms of the Milky Way galaxy. This cloud of gas, known to astronomers as a nebula, was mostly made up of hydrogen and helium, with a small quantity of heavier elements. This nebula cloud started to shrink and collapse and on itself. Once the atoms were split apart, they started to push against each other, creating heat. The atoms clashed more frequently and fiercely as the temperature increased. They eventually achieved a temperature where the protons in the atom's nuclei started to fuse, a process known as nuclear fusion. A star was created as a result of the transformation of a small amount of matter into a large amount of energy. This was how our Sun came into being. The Birth of the Planets the sun's gravity kept the flat disk of dust and gas that was formed from the nebula's remaining material in orbit. This was also known as an accretion disk. Further accretion caused material in the disk to build up by clinging together. In the accretion disk, each planet first appeared as minute grains of dust. The atoms and molecules started to accrete or cling together to form bigger particles. Some grains are formed into balls and eventually become objects with a diameter of a mile by gentle impacts. These came to be protoplanets. Since they were large enough, additional cosmic matter was drawn to them by gravity. Protoplanet impacts could break apart if this happened faster, but luckily these collisions were soft enough to make the pieces come together and expand. These planets orbited the Sun for 10 to 100 million years. Some of them were also impacted by numerous collisions with space debris and matter. Over a prolonged era of rapid change, worlds merged, converged, and developed. This led to the creation of eight stable planets that ended up having stable orbits. And this took about four and a half to five billion years to form. Millions of asteroids, small pieces of rock, ice, and metallic things left over from the creation of the solar system can be found in the region between the inner and outer planets. In this location, no planets have formed. According to astronomers, Jupiter's gravitational pull in this area was so strong that no massive planet could form. If you look at Jupiter, it's actually larger than all the other planets and put together has a diameter that is 11 times the size of Earth. 
whereas Mercury, the smallest of the four rocky planets, being roughly two-fifths the size of Earth, Mars is almost half the size of Venus and Earth, respectively. According to astronomers, the larger-than-normal iron core is all that remains of Mercury after its crust was vaporized by a smaller object that struck the planet. How did the planets align? Contrary to what is depicted in movies, the planets in our solar system never line up in a single, perfectly straight line. You may conclude that all the planets ultimately circle around the same line if you look at a two-dimensional map of the planets and where their orbits on a sheet of paper. But the planets do not all exactly orbit on the same plane in reality. Instead, they move about in three dimensions in various orbits. When astronomers use phrases like planetary alignment, they do not always mean a literal alignment. They only show that a few planets are scattered throughout a similar region of the sky. Initially, astronomers believed that planets originated in the solar system's current positions. However, the discovery of exoplanets upended everything by showing that at least some of the largest worlds might move through their surroundings. The NICE model, named after the French city where the researchers initially discussed it, was described in three studies that were published in the journal Nature in 2005. According to this hypothesis, the major planets were orbited in considerably more compact near-circular orbits in the early solar system than they are now. Just beyond Neptune's current orbit, a vast disk of ice and rocks encircled them, extending outward toward a distance of nearly 35 times the distance between the Earth and the Sun. Most of these items were dispersed toward the Sun as a result of interactions between the planets and smaller bodies. By exchanging energy with the smaller objects, the process moves Saturn, Neptune, and Uranus farther outside of the solar system. The tiny objects eventually came to Jupiter, which sent them out of the solar system or as far as possible. Uranus and Neptune were forced into even more erratic orbits by motion between Jupiter and Saturn, which caused them to pass through the remnant ice disk. During the late heavy bombardment, some of the material was hurled inward and collided with the terrestrial planets. The Kuiper Belt was formed as additional material was sent into space. Neptune and Uranus switched positions and made a gradual outward motion. As they approached their present distance from the Sun, interactions with the leftover debris eventually led the duo to settle into more circular courses. There may have been some losses for our solar system along the way, and it's probable that this migration forced one or two additional large planets from the region. And our final pit stop, life on Earth. To know more about this, we have done an episode on what was Earth like before dinosaurs, so please go and check that out. But to think about the existence of galaxies, stars, planets, and life all starting from a single point of explosion, surely must get you thinking about how magnificent space is. I hope you enjoyed your trip. Give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Thank you for watching.